We've talked about modeling business concepts using content types. Now it's time to look at the UX. I'm taking the same Iron Maiden application that I used in the last video to discuss business concept modeling, and it's definitely worth the watch to get a full rounded view. I'll leave the link in the corner here for you. But this video is going to explain how to take a customer experience, turn it into content types that business users can use to manage the overall user experience. Again, I'm going to use in the Amplian CMS for this demo. Boy, are you in for a treat. But let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. So this is the view application I built myself. It took me about two weeks and it's completely driven by the Ampliance headless CMS. And all the images are delivered by the Ampliance dynamic media service. This is currently running on my own machine right now, so I can't send you a link. But for the devs out there, for reference, I've used View with Viewtify for the UX framework. So the key part of the experience where everything starts is at the homepage. At the top, we can see an app bar with the menu. Then we have a masthead with a nice image. You can also see the Iron Maiden logo. And beneath the masthead, we have four different components. We have the tours list component that shows you up and coming performances with a nice background image. We have a promo banner in this this is advertising the Senjutsu album, the new album they just released. We also have an image gallery of photos and we have a video gallery. All of this is managed within Ampliance, headless CMS. If we open up the menu, we can see a tour section with the ability to connect to past tours or future tours. We can also see there's a music section that allows you to link to releases such as singles and albums, and also a menu item for songs and lyrics that will take you to a list of page of all the songs that I've put into the system. So if we click through onto the past tours page, you can see a full list of all of the performances in date order. And you can filter all of these performances by year. Note the masthead image and the page title are also content managed. If we click on one of the performances like Sunrise out in Florida, we can see the performance basic details, but much more than that, we can actually see lists of all the songs that are being played during that performance. So we can see the set list and the encore. And then underneath, you can also see another video gallery and another image gallery. So if we click on one of the songs in the list, like Ace is High, we get to the songs detail page. And here we can see the writer, the lyrics, all the things you'd expect in the details of a song. But again, we see a lot more than that. We can actually see the releases, and we can see the performances in which that song has been performed in. And if we follow the path to the Futures Tours and click on one of the performances, you can see it's pretty much the same, except you don't have the list of songs. Right, let's take a look at the releases. And here is where we get a list of all the releases or all the releases I've put in the system right now. And you can also filter the releases by type. And I've set up an albums and a singles type. And if we click on one of the releases like Sensu, we get to the release details page. Again, we see some simple details about the release. This is the release dates and notes about the release, as well as the main cover image for that release. Just like the performance detail, you can see there is a list of songs. Again, if you click on one of those song links, you get back to a songs detail page. And finally, if we click on songs and lyrics, we get to a full list of all the songs by alphabetical order. So you can click directly through to a songs detail page. Before we can start to actually model the content types of the user experience, let's define the UX concepts for this band site. In the first video that I did, we modeled out all the business concepts and that really created the main content base for all the content that will flow throughout the site. But let's start looking at the UX components and the UX concepts that draw that content into the experience. So the first UX concept is that of a page in the application. Although Headless CMS doesn't actually use a specific templating technology, I've actually defined a master template for the UX itself that will thread through every single page. Each page will start with an app bar where the menu will sit, and then a masthead with a background image and a page title if you wish. And at the bottom, we'll have a very simple footer. And in that center space between the masthead and the footer, that's where all of our content will actually go. That's where all of the specific page componentry will sit. So let's look at the specific components in each page. We'll start with the home page. The home page, as I said earlier, is based on four components. The tours list will show a list of all the up and coming performances, and that's a list that the users can create themselves. Then we have a banner, which allows you to promote releases, and that'll have a call to action link that'll take you to a release details page. 
The homepage also has two gallery components, one for images and one for videos. And these are YouTube videos. And I went through how to define those content types in the previous video. Okay, let's move on to our functional pages. We have functional pages for listing. And that includes tours and performances and listing releases, or even listing all the songs that have entered into the system. Many of the listing pages have filters, such as the releases page, which allows you to filter down by release type. The list of pages allow you to then connect to a details page, like the release detail or a performance detail page. Finally, we have one of the main central functional pages, the song detail page. And this provides all the componentry to give you details about the song, but also references, releases and performances that that song is a part of. So now let's take a look at the primary navigation. The navigation has two sections, one for tours containing links to past tours and future tours, and a section for music for linking to the releases lister page and for linking to the songs lister page. So that's a quick run through of all the UX components. Let's move on to what do we want to manage within that component tree. So we have a business model filled with content and we've defined all the user experience elements. The real question is, what should we actually manage? Let's take a very simple view for the implementation process for a headless CMS. We have creatives that design the user experience. We have business users defining the business requirements for the experience and the functionality. And we have the developers that pull that together and actually build the experience. Once that's been built and implemented, you need then to operate the system. And to do that, you'll have business users to operate the system involved, such as the CMS and the e-commerce platform. And the things that you can manage are not just constrained by the systems themselves, but what the developers actually enabled in the implementation. This is no more so than in the UX. So what do I mean by that? If the developers are not given the requirements for managing parts of the user experience, it will mean that those aspects will be embedded into the code of the user experience, meaning that it will take developers to make changes. This will mean that business users will not be able to optimize or reuse elements of the user experience for things like new campaigns, new performances, or even feedback on the customer experience itself. As part of the requirements capturing process, you need to consider what attributes of the customer experience you want to manage and what components need to be managed by the CMS. So the developers can ultimately use the functionality of the CMS to enable the business users to manage those experiences. Otherwise, changes to the UX will always be in the domain of the developer. So at high level, what are these considerations? Well, first of all, you have styling or theming. You have layout, content, and configuration. Next, when defining content types. Not only do we have to think how complicated they would be if you try to manage everything, but also what level of reuse that you want from these components. If we take a simple continuum with app-specific components on one side of the scale and completely generic and agnostic at the other end of the scale, we can see where the options for configuring UX component content types sit. Sitting on the far left, we have app-specific settings and config. And and then on the far right, we have content. So that can be anything from labels to promotional content that's not part of the business model. And then somewhere in the middle, you have layout maybe a little bit on the left. Then styling and theming sits in the middle and maybe to the right. That could be as simple as defining hints for text to be light on a dark image or more generic theming attributes that can translate across many other applications. Before we move on, if you like this video, please do me one quick favor. Can you click on that like button so this video can spread to many others? And now it's time for the final part of the process. It's time to model the content types for the UX components that will be managed within the Ampliant CMS. I'm not gonna go through all the minute detail of each content type, like every single field. I'm gonna concentrate on the structure, what content types we need, how they're linked together, whether they're hierarchical or linked. I'm gonna focus on the pages and the components we use on the home page for now. We'll start by focusing on the primary model for the site. The site settings content type will contain all the page settings throughout the site. We'll manage the functional pages using a page settings content type. Here we can manage the master template settings such as the masthead or define the root or application URL for the page. This is often given to you by the developers. Examples of these types of pages include the songs detail page or the songs lister page. 
Next, we'll create the content type for the marketing landing pages. In this case, the home page. It also needs the same master template attributes. And this landing page will have four types of components. The tours lister component. For example, we can create a list of performances for the Legacy of Beast tour. And the banner content type we use for promoting the Senjutsu album. And then we'll have an image gallery for managing image links and the video gallery. The tour list component will not only allow users to create the list of performances, but it will also enable them to add a background image and a heading. And the banner content type will allow the users to set the background image, set a heading and define the call to action link. And that link will go to an album. Let's finish off with the menu content type. The menu content type is used to model the primary navigation. The root item is given a key or a friendly name. And this allows developers to easily query for the primary navigation. Under the main item, we have the menu section content type. This is the component that allows you to create sections within menus. Its only attribute is the name. And this is used for the music and the tour section. And the last content item in the tree is the menu item. And this creates the links to pages, such as the lister page for past and future tours, and the releases and the songs lister. The menu item content type allows you to set the name, which is used for the label. The root and parameters which help you link to the page. And this is given to you by the developers. For example, the releases menu item would have releases for the name, the release lister for the root, and for the parameter, it would have the value all. Right, let's start to look at these content types in action. This is the Ampliance headless CMS. We are first going to filter the content library to the two content types we've been talking about, menu, and site settings. We click on the site setting for the Iron Maiden pages and open the tree and see all the Iron Maiden pages we have created for this site. The first eight pages are the functional page settings for the listings and the details pages. There are fields for the root, the masthead image, and the page name to satisfy the UX master template. Now let's look at the home page that uses the landing page content type. It also has the same configuration as the other pages, except it has been given the ability to have child components. The first first component is the tours lister component. Here we can add and remove performances from the list by accessing the core business content model of the band site. The content type also allows us to add a background image to make the performance lists really pop. Next we have the banner component where we advertise the new Senjutsu album. Here we can add a heading, strap line, an image, but also the call to action. We create the call to action by linking the banner to the album content that's contained inside the core business content model. Here you can see the entry for the Senjutsu album I created in the previous video. The next component is the image gallery where we can add, remove and arrange images in a list. Finally, we have the video gallery component where we manage the list of YouTube videos that we want to promote. Now let's take a look at the menu content type. Here we will explore the primary navigation content. For this menu, we gave it a key or a friendly name that the developers can use to retrieve it. We also have two section content items for tours and for music. The sections have menu items that point to the functional pages that we have defined. Each menu item has a name used for the menu item label, such as releases and a root name and parameter that points to the functional page that's provided by the developer or me in this particular case. So that's a quick run through of the content types in action inside the Ampliance Headless CMS. Not only can you see how easy it is to manage the UX in this model, but also how it connects to the business content we created in the last video. Headless CMS gives you a huge amount of power when it comes to modeling content, but it's really important to think about every aspect of what you're going to model. By thinking about the business concepts independently of the UX, gives you a huge amount of flexibility and reuse. But if you don't consider how you're actually going to manage the UX in a headless system, you'll soon be bogged down with development cycles. Ultimately, what you're going to do is move the problems you had with the monolith into the head. This video goes somewhere into explaining how to look at UX and how to model it using content types. But watch this space for a more detailed video in the future. But for now, take a look at this next video and learn more about modular content and how to use it in a headless CMS. And if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button. But for now, it's time to say thank you and I'll see you next time.